welcome each and every single one of you here today to see it. As we get ready to go into the Word of God, tonight we're going to talk about don't let Delilah cut your hair. Brothers and sisters, I was going to wait till the end of the week, but the Lord put it on my mind. You better preach it right now. All right, everything is up here, okay? We want to make sure everything is fine. And we want to thank uh, your pastor, Pastor Thompson, for inviting me. And because this is my ancestral homeland, I will never say no to come to the kingdom. Amen. And so when he told me earlier this year he wanted me to come for a whole week, he knew I wasn't going to say no to that. Amen. Amen. I just thank God this is my third time coming back home. And as for those of you that are uh, guests here for the first time, or those who are here for the first time, 200 years ago in this country, is, is that Matita? Hey, that's my big cousin over there, Matita. Hey, I'm related to I mean, a lot of people in this island. Amen. Hey, yeah. hey, Amen. And you know, let me tell you before we get into the Word of God, uh, about four, four years ago, I got married, my wife and I got married. I had met uh, one of my cousins on an ancestry website. And uh, we were talking and chatting. My wife met her, and we were planning on coming to Canaan for our honeymoon. And all of a sudden, I couldn't get in contact with my cousin, and she literally dropped off the map. So I told my wife, we're not going to Canaan. She said, we don't know, we just go. I'm like, how am I going to find a relative in a country as big as this? <laughs> and and it's, it, you know, you're looking for one person in this country, how are you going to find it? So what happened was, I, we only went on faith, we came here. So I had a speaking engagement at the Bottomtown Church. Uh, Pastor Billy Miranda and uh, some of you know him, talked to, Pat, to the pres current president to set it up. And so, you know, went down past the Georgetown Church, and I had a picture of my cousin and her mother. And I asked somebody at the church, do you know who these two ladies are? These are my cousins. And they said, we don't know. I said, okay, let me just go to Bottomtown. I had to preach there. I come to Bottomtown, I meet a guy, I'm from Honduras, and I said, you know who these two ladies are? I don't know, but the head of the Elder McLean they know. And I asked Elder McLean, I said, do you know who these two ladies are? He said, those are my cousins, are my nieces. I said, oh man, which means he was my cousin. <laughs> which means that, is Mother McLean your cousin? Yeah. Yes, I said, and she's my relative too. <laughs> and then that night, he said, What's your family name from, from Honduras? And I said, uh, one of the last names is Alan. He said, oh, I'm related to Alan. He drove me from Bodentown all the way to West End to Karen Allen Gupta's house. And come to find out, they're my family too. Boy, I tell you, that was the Lord, amen? So we came here on faith, and God bless me to see my family and still need more family here. And as I promised last night, Pastor Thompson, we can, we can give it out, the, the gift, amen. I wrote a book, and we're going to give a gift of my book to any Jamaican in here that's from St. Catherine Parish, because before we came to Canaan, amen, amen, both, both sides of my mother's family are from St. Catherine Parish in Jamaica, amen, amen. I like this ancestry stuff, amen. Somebody says, so how far did your Cayman ancestry go? My, my Cayman ancestry goes back to the late 1700s, amen. Amen. So I have deep Canadian roots here. Amen. Amen. And uh, we thank God for that. And so anyway, I love doing ancestry search. That's one of my hobbies. So if you're from St. Catherine, you can get, if you are from St. Catherine, for real, you, you can't lie in the church now. Amen. If you are from St. Catherine Parish, uh, we get a free copy of my book. Amen. Amen. Now, to Laura and I, your brothers, and I'm going to are you from there. Amen. I think you are from there. Hey, not your brother. You. Amen. Now, tomorrow night, now, is there a Honduran in the house? Okay. If there's a Honduran, bring up. Oh, there's two Honduran. Were you here last night? Oh, that's the Fouché, right? Oh, we got to give them We gotta give them a book. Amen. That's my family. That, they are my family, too. Amen. If there's a Honduran that comes anytime this week, they definitely get one. Amen. Amen. And I love ancestry, sir. So, brothers and sisters, coming to Canaan is always a special occasion for me. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God? Amen. Amen. Now, let me ask you a quiz question tonight. What church do I pastor? Amen. Amen. How many watch it or have watched it? Amen. Amen. And we give the what testimony? Straight testimony. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So we're going to give you some straight. Can I give the straight testimony this week? Yes. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to talk about don't let Delilah cut your hair. Because if you fall asleep, you may wake up and have no hair like me. Am I right? <laughs> and if you don't have no hair, that means you'll have no power. Am I right? So what we got to do with Seven Day Adventist is stay as far away from Delilah as possible. Am I right? And don't fall asleep so your hair won't get what somebody cut. So with that, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Eternal Father, we ask that you would pour out your spirit in an unlimited measure right now. I ask that you would empty me of self and fill me with yourself, Lord God. And we want to pray that you would bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Oh, on Wednesday night. What night did I say? Wednesday. You got to come back Wednesday. Because on Wednesday, we're going to talk about entertainment and music. Amen? Can we talk about it? Because if we talk about being a part of 144,000, we can't be listening to the music of Delilah. Am I right? I'm all right, somebody. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dedicate. Who's the, where's the AY leader? Where's the A? Is, there a, is the AY leader here? Okay, well, we're gonna, I'm going to be dedicating uh, many copies of my book to all the youth. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So um, let me see how many more books we got left for mine. Oh, they all gone. All right, so i got to bring them back tomorrow night. All right, so let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 14. All right, Revelation the 14th chapter. Revelation the 14th chapter. We're going to look at some verses here. And always remember, you got to bring your Bible. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And what we want to do is this. Now, the Bible talks about those who are going to uh, be wide awake when this thing comes. Now, the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto how many virgins? Ten virgins. Five were wise and five were what? Somebody. Foolish. They both have the lamp. That means they have a knowledge of the word of God. But the problem was the foolish did not have the oil, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Did we cover that last night? So it's very important that we have the anointing of God in our lives, controlling and influencing every area of our lives. Because when the crisis comes, we don't want to be uh, trying to get the oil on top of it. We replenish that which is gone. And the Bible said in the book of Matthew that while the bridegroom tarried, all the virgins slumbered and what somebody? Slept. And the Bible says that at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to do what somebody? Meet him. Now we're going to go back to that verse later on. We talk about not letting Delilah cut our hair. But in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1, do you have it? It says in verse 1, And lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, we're not going to get into whether this number is literal or symbolic. That's a whole other study. But whether it's literal or symbolic, 144,000 is a very small number. Am I right, somebody? Because the Bible says, enter ye at the straight gate. Amen? For wide is the gate, and broad is the way which leadeth unto destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And the Bible says that few there be that find. You understand this? So understand, the majority of the people on this planet are not going to make it. Do you understand this? The majority of the folk in the church are not going to make it. Do you understand this right here? You're going to have a lot of Christians find themselves without the oil. You're going to find a lot of Christians having their hair cut off by Delilah when it's too late to get your hair grown back. Don't let Delilah cut your hair. The Bible says that the 144,000 has the Father's name written in their foreheads. But look at verse 4. Verse 4, the Bible says, and we're going to go to the PowerPoint right now. It says, these were the, are they which were not defiled with who, somebody? With women, all right? The Bible says, these are they which were not defiled with women. Now, in Bible prophecy, a woman is symbolic of a what, somebody? A church. So, in the last days, the Bible says, Babylon is what, somebody? Fallen is fallen. The Bible says that Babylon is the mother of harlots, am I right? So what happens is, is that God's remnant people will not be caught in any ecumenical association with the fallen churches. Do you understand this right here? Because if you do, they're going to cut your hair off. Do you understand this right here? So what we need to understand is we need to understand who we are and what our calling is as seven-day Adventists. And I think that's very 
it's very essential, especially in these last days. Am I right, somebody? Because the Bible says, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. And the Bible makes it very plain that these virgins will be the wise virgins. They have the oil in the lamp. Amen? But so that tells me that even though Samson was a spiritual virgin, talking about he professed a fear of pure, pure faith, nevertheless, Samson got defiled with the wrong woman. Am I right, somebody? And he lost everything. Now, I want to show you something tonight. And the Bible says, let's go to our, our PowerPoint. Um, don't let the lilac touch your hair, all right? Now, is this going to work from here? Is this going to be good? All right, good. All right, good. All right, now, understand this right here. We need to, let's go to the screen here. Now, in the church, you have wheat and you have what? Tares. So you have the children of the kingdom and the children of the wicked one. The Bible says that they both are going to grow together until the harvest. Am I right, somebody? So understand this. Ellen G. White says that we have far more to fear from within than from where, somebody? Without. So notice this right here. We have more to fear from our own, among our own people than those out there in the world, right? It says the hindrances to strength and success are far greater from where? Church itself than from the world. How often have the professed advocates of the truth proved to be the greatest obstacles to his advancement. Have mercy. You, that means that we are our own worst enemy, right? Yes. It says, quote, the elderly indulge, the doubts express, and the darkness, what somebody? Yes. Cherish. We got to stop right there. You got seven day events. You got members all over the world who do not believe what we teach. They doubt what we teach. Am I right? And because of that, they're walking in what somebody? Darkness. Ellen G. White says they encourage the presence of what kind of angels? Evil angels. Have mercy. Have you heard of the Jesuits? Now, we talk about Jesuit infiltration in the church, but Ellen G. White says that you will have angels in the form of believers in the church. Have mercy. Bringing in a strong spirit of unbelief. We are told they open the way for the accomplishment of Satan's devices. But always remember, the church may appear as about to what somebody? Fall, but it does not what? Fall, it remains while the sinners in Zion will be what somebody? Sifted out. That's what those are the foolish virgins. The chaff separated from the precious wheat. Right now, we are in the greatest crisis in the history of the seventh day of the church. Can you agree with that, brothers and sisters? It has gotten more liberal. It's gotten more loose. It has gotten more permissive now than at any time in the history of the church. And it's threatening the church to wear, at least in America, to wear it in another generation or so. Guess what? It won't be the same Adventism that was started back in the 1800s. Do you understand this right here? Do you understand this right here? And we're going to talk about this today. Ellen White talked about it as an iceberg, to where the church was going towards an iceberg, going towards a crisis. But we were told to meet it. Now, I'm not going to get into all this right here because it's a lot to talk about. But we're told that we are now in the great day of what's somebody? Atonement. When our sins are by confession and repentance to go beforehand to judgment. We are told that God does not now accept a tame, spiritless testimony from where? His ministers. Why? Because such a testimony would not be what kind of truth? Present truth. Ellen White says that there are many precious truths contained in the word of God. But it's the present truth which the flock needs now. Isaiah 58 says, cry aloud and do what somebody? Spare not. Lift up thy voice as a what? Trumpet and show that the people of God bear transgression and the house of Jacob bear what somebody? But ministers don't want to do that today. They want to preach all these motivational sermons. They want to preach all these smooth sermons. Do you understand this right here? That do not awaken conviction. And there are people that folk do not want the conference to hire. Because if we hire them, they're going to bring the straight testimony. Do you understand this right here? So what happens is this. We've got to bring the straight testimony. The straight testimony has to come back to the Cayman Islands. Do you understand this right here? It says the message for this time must be meet in due season to feed the church of God. Amen? But we're told that Satan has been seeking what somebody? Gradually. He doesn't do it um, all at one time, but he does it by degrees. Notice this right here. Now, could it be that Samson's hair was cut off by degrees? Because he was sleeping, am I right? Because had he just chopped it off at one stop, he would have woke up, am I right? Am I right? So they had to chop it off by degrees. Do you understand this? Satan has been seeking gradually to rob the message 
Notice this right here. Of his blessing of his power. That the people may not be prepared to stand in the day of the Lord. Do you understand this? Do not let the lie of cut your hair. Because let me tell you, the foolish virgins are not going to make it. Do you understand? This? They are not going to make it. That's why you need the anointing of God in your life. Do you understand this? This is very serious. Now, so the question is, we asked the question last night. Will the real seven-day Adventist want somebody? You better stand up and have that oil in your life. I have been shown that evil angels and the former believers will work in our ranks to bring in the strong spirit of what's about it? Unbelief. So that means you better be careful who you allow to become a member here. Am I right? It could be a demon. Have mercy. Am I right? And don't let them on the board either. Amen? So what we need to understand is, is who we are and where we came from. God has brought his church from out of the world. Am I right? Now we know that the church is not a building, but the church is symbolic of the whole somebody. People. Now the word church comes from a Greek word called ekklesia, which means a coming out. So I said coming out. Right. Coming out. So hold on. God brought his church out of Egypt, am I right? And he said, I'm going to make you a peculiar people. What kind of people? <laughs> so what happens is we cannot be ashamed of the calling that God has on us to be peculiar, separate, different, and distinctive. Am I right, somebody? Oh, if I had a whole month and came and we can let all the cat out the bag. Amen? But look what the Bible says. I am the Lord thy God, yes. which have brought you out of the land of where somebody. Yes. Before God said, thou shalt not. And remember, he said, I am the Lord thy God. He wants you to let you know what I'm going to tell you is right because I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt, out of the house of what somebody? Bondage. So therefore, to be in Egypt is to be in bondage. Am I right, somebody? But when Moses was on Mount Sinai, and remember, the parable said last night, while the bridegroom tarried, all the virgins slumbered in what somebody? Yeah. And Moses tarried for 40 days, and you know what happened? They made a what somebody? A golden what somebody? Calf. Why? Because the bridegroom had tarried. So what happens is, because Jesus has tarried, we as God's people have brought the golden calf in the seventh day of his church. Right? Mercy. And it's time for us to get that calf out. Am I right? And if there's an element, if we are told in inspiration, if you got leaders, you got church members, you got uh, that don't want to follow the truth, guess what? They need to be relieved of their duties. Have mercy. There may be some pastors that need to get fired. There may be some theologians that need to stop teaching in our schools, lying to our kids. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Because what happens is when you send your kids to a seven day Adventist school, they should come back more stronger in their faith than when they came. Am I right? But it's the other way around now to where you got some of our kids coming back looking like and talking like and sounding like Egyptians. Have mercy. <laughs> Do you understand this? Yes. So what happens is, is that we're going to have to tighten up the screws here. Do you understand this? Baby? The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things which are in the world. Am I right? Yes. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Yes. So what we got to do is not bring Egypt or the golden calf, yes, or the things of the world, into the church. Am I right, somebody? Amen. 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 We got to keep the golden calf out. Am I right? Yes. But what you got to do is you got to destroy that golden calf. Yes. God said, you go into Canaan, I want you to destroy their gods. Am I right? And they had to destroy them because if you left it out, if you left it outside the camp, somebody may try to sneak it in. Am I right, somebody? So God says, I want you to destroy it. God says, notice this, in Leviticus, the Bible says, after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye now what somebody do? So hold on now. In any relationship, there are do's and don'ts. I'm going to raise somebody. You know that. When it comes to mama, a parent and child relationship, there are certain things a parent should not do. Am I right? Parents should not abuse their kids. Am I right? And children are to obey their parents. Am I right? On oh, your job, there's do's and don'ts. Am I right? And for those of you that love sports, whether it's cricket, whether it's football or whatever it is, there's rules to every game, am I right? Well, guess what? We're in a thing called the game of life, am I right? Am I right? And there are rules to the game. Now, back in the day, I wanted to be a professional basketball player because I love basketball. And for those that love to play sports, think about it for a minute. If you love playing the sport, do you worry about the rules? You have no problem because you love the game, am I right? So if you love Jesus in the game of life, you have no problem being in alignment with his rules. What do you say out there? And these rules are made to protect you. 
Now, in football, when I say football, I'm not talking about American football. You know what I'm talking about? Football, football. The real, so the real football, soccer. Do y'all call it soccer? Do y'all call it football? Football. Okay, so it's football, right? So what happens is, in football, now in basketball, I can hold the ball with my hands. In, in, in American football, I can have, but in soccer, can you do that? You will be penalized, am I right? Now, wouldn't it be easy for me to take the ball and just run with the soccer ball and just throw it into the goal? It'd be easy, but I couldn't do it, right? Now, you got to kick it, am I right? And I never liked soccer. <laughs> All right, I never really got a, got a hold of it. But bottom line is this right here. If you don't, if you like playing a sport or something, you have no problem following the rules if you love the game, amen? So if you love Jesus, you don't mind following his rules, amen? Because in every sport, there are restrictions, am I right, somebody? In most sports, you can't go out of bounds, am I right? If it's soccer, football, American football, basketball, rugby, and even cricket, am I right, somebody? You can't go out of bounds, am I right? So there are boundaries in every sport, am I right? Am I right? So in this thing called Christianity, there are boundaries that God has put up. He's put 10 boundaries called the 10 what, somebody? Uh -huh. Commandments. And what's happened is, is that you got folk that want to um, try to violate the rules by saying it's okay to go out of bounds and still win the game. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, shall you not do? And after the doings of the land of where, somebody? Came whither I bring you. The Bible says, shall you not what, somebody? Do neither shall ye walk in there was somebody. So in other words, I don't care what the Canaanites are doing, what the Egyptians are doing. I don't want my people doing any of this stuff. Do you understand this right here? But guess what? By the bride and Jerry, they all slumbered in what somebody. Stuff started creeping into the church. Am I right, somebody? You know why? Because guess what? The best time for the devil to bring things into the church is when the church is sleeping. Am I right, somebody? Amen. But when you're wide awake, you can't bring nothing in the church. Am I right? So that tells me that the things that have been coming going on that are not right in God's church is because people are asleep. Have mercy. Are you ready for some more straight testimony? Yes. Oh, wait till tomorrow. Wait till tomorrow. Night's going to be ten times better. But look at this right here. We have what's called a tragic duplicity going on in the church. You have the church that is supposed to uphold what kind of values? Christian values. Am I right, somebody? That's the purpose of Cayman Academy, Oakland University, and all of our schools and all of our churches. Am I right? We're supposed to uphold what kind of principles? But we're living in a sinful what? Come on now, sinful what? Oh, you can't see that word. Society, okay? We're living in a sinful society that has what kind of values? Cultural values. Now, culture is good at its place, but what happens is there's some cultural values that don't need to be in the church. Now, I was going to show you that video with you saying both wearing a dress, right? I haven't forgot. They didn't bring that thing tonight, so I got to show it tomorrow night. You come on, like every Jamaican needs to be here tomorrow night. Let you know that the cultural values of the world are creeping into the wear, somebody. Let's go to the screen now. Now, what happens is, what happens when the cultural values of the world coming to the church. What happens to the Christian values? Look what happens. Look at that. Look. There it is. Hold on. Let me go back one more time. When the cultural values come into the church, what happens to the values that God has given us? They what somebody? They change. But hold on now. When it's Christians, Christians want to spiritualize. So they want to put a halo over it and say, as long as we say it's Christian, it's okay. But what happens is this. Let me just get past all this right here. Oh, yeah. So what happens is when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he was bringing them out of Pharaoh's centrism, which was centered in man, the understandings, which led to humanistic living. But what God wanted to do, he wanted to bring his people into Yahweh's centrism. Amen? We want our life centered in God's word, am I right? And when our lives are centered in God's word, it leads to what kind of living is about it? Prophetic living. So we as God's people are called to live prophetically, not humanistically, the understandings. So for every worldly song, every worldly custom that's out there that's not of God to be preached so hard it is to keep the church away from, guess what? Those, that all we see is nothing more than humanism. I'm all right, somebody. The legalization of gay marriage. And you know, is this a Christian country? Is Cayman a Christian country? Man, it, it shouldn't even be patched. I'm all right, somebody. Amen? And those who pass those laws need to be voted out. Do you understand this? Amen? 
And if you don't want to go tonight, you can pray about it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because guess what? Just because America doesn't, doesn't mean it's right. And now, guess what? Homosexuality is knocking on the door of the church. And to where in America, they now have gay pastors. <laughs> Talking about this is the new pastor, this is his husband, that verse. <laughs> And this, and this church is predominantly Jamaica. I know you wouldn't go for that. You yeah. definitely wouldn't go for that. <laughs> oh, no. Am I right? Right. You're a real Jamaican. Am I right, somebody, right? Right. But watch this right here. God has called us out of humanism. Do you understand this? So when we was in the world, we were living humanistically. When we come to Christ, we would live prophetically. Amen? Because the Bible says that man should not live by bread alone, but by every what? Word. That proceeded out of the mouth of who, somebody? Oh, so we must live by the word. Amen? Like I told you last night, when it comes to dating and courtship and marriage, you better marry somebody who's living prophetically. Am I right, somebody? Because if you marry somebody who's following the standards of Egypt, you're going to have a thing called what? Collision. Am I right? It's going to be some collision in your marriage. Collision in your love life. Collision in every area. Collision in how you raise your children. Do you understand this right here? And then you're going to be crying and whining. But guess what? It was your fault because you didn't listen to God. Am I right? The Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with who? Unbelievers. Oh, I wish I had a month here in Canaan. We'll talk about it every night. Amen. Amen. But notice this right here. We've got to show this. So at State Line, that's why at State Line, we have a model at State Line. Our model is simply no apostasy what somebody. And we mean it. You understand this right here. Now, we're not going to be mean about it. We're not going to be nasty about it. But somebody got to lift up a standard, am I right? Yes. Am I right? Yes. We just can't be an Adventist church and just let anything in the church, am I right? Let any old body in the church. Do you understand this right here? All in the name of love. Even when heaven, heaven, heaven says no apostasy allowed. Can I show it to you? Let's look at Revelation 21, verse 27. Let's look at Revelation 21 and verse 27. Brothers and sisters, oh, I can't wait till tomorrow night. I can't wait till Wednesday. Everybody needs to be when we talk about music. Are you going to come here? Yes. We're going to talk about this hip hop that all these people are listening to. Have mercy. And if I get this thing working together, I'm going to show you some videos and some lyrics to let you know that our young people and no adult, if you listen to any music that's not glorifying God. I'm all right, somebody. Man, back in the day when I was growing up, one of my favorite songs is called Secret Lovers. Have mercy. <laughs> And for some of y'all back in the 70s, it was a song called Me and Mrs. Jones. Have you heard of that song? Oh, man, the people in the head and it. That's all that was my jam, right? Talking about me and Mrs. Jones got a thing going on. Every Wednesday, have mercy. You don't even be singing songs like that. Because what if somebody said me and Mrs. whatever your wife's last name is? You wouldn't be singing that song, am I right? <laughs> Whitney Houston had a song called Saving All My Love. Remember that one? Yes. That was talking about her being in love with a married man. Have mercy. All these songs talk about adultery. All these songs talk about fornication. And you're wondering why some of us can't get victory over sin. Because you put music in your mind that's glorifying satanic principles. Now, when we talk about the rap music, wait till Wednesday night. Because it is prayer meeting night. And we're going to talk about the music. I'm going to show you the lyrics that your children are listening to. In Canaan, do you understand this? And, and guess what? Canaan is not too far from America. Only a stone's throw. Am I right, somebody? I got on that plane yesterday. I closed my eyes with a lift off, opened my eyes. I was in Canaan. That's how close it was. That's how close it was. Listen to this right here. Revelation 21, verse 27. The Bible, the Bible says, look what the Bible says, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that does what's about it, and neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of what's about it. So if you want your name to, to be in the book of life, you got to let go of sin. Amen? If you want your name to remain in the Lamb's book of life, you got to let go of what's about it? Because that's why we say no apostasy allowed. You can this way here. So at every seven day of the church in Canaan, y'all should have a sign that says, no apostasy, what's somebody? Allow. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Ellen G. White says that sins exist where? In the church that God hates. Have mercy. But they are scarcely touched for, for fear of making what? 
In other words, the pastor preaches something you don't like, we're going to call the conference on you, right? You got people like that. Well, I've got the president's ear. And guess what? I got God's ear, amen? And he'll deal with you. Have mercy. I had somebody in the state where I tried to get me put out last year, lied to the conference, and said, get him out of there. And guess what the conference did? They got him out of there. Have mercy. But listen to this. Opposition has risen in the church to the plain testimony. Some will not what? Bear it. They wish for what kind of things? Smooth things to be spoken unto them. And then it says, and if the wrongs of individuals are touched, they complain to what somebody? Oh, Pastor Thompson, he preached a harsh sermon. Well, is it harsh for your doctor to tell you that you got cancer? Is it harsh for your doctor to say you don't uh, 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 change your lifestyle, you're going to die in six months? Oh, you don't have a no problem with the doctor telling you that. But when the preacher tells you you live in sin and you need to stop, you're going to go to hell, oh, we're going we're gonna to get him moved to, 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 to Timbuktu somewhere, right? <laughs> they complain of severity and sympathize with those in the wrong. As Ahab inquired of Elijah, art thou he that trouble in Israel? They are ready to look with what somebody? <laughs> and doubt upon those who bear the plain testimony. Trust me, people don't want to hear the truth no more. They want to be lied to. You understand this? You know people want to be lied to, right? Yes. You know, I gotta show it to you because you're not gonna believe it. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 30. People would rather be lied to than be told the truth. They would rather be told that Delilah's not gonna cut your hair, but in reality, she got the clippers and the scissors ready to cut. I'm all right, somebody. And folk don't want to believe the truth. You understand this? But I'm going to tell you the truth this week. Oh, if I had four more weeks with you, we could talk to the whole island and really get deep, down, dirty, and nasty with the truth. I'm going to raise somebody. We need to hear the truth, amen? The Bible says, in Isaiah chapter 30, do you have it? Yes. Notice what the Bible says. What, kind of, what is the condition of religious folk all over the world in the church? I'm going to let God tell you, amen? The Bible says in verse 9, that this is a what kind of people? Come on, come on, come on. The Bible says they're rebellious, am I right? Have you, have, have you, have you ever had to deal with a rebellious child? Have you ever had to deal with a rebellious child? And when that child was rebellious, what did you do? You gave him some licks? No. Did you give him licks? No. Did you spank him? Did you whip him? Or did you beat him? Which one did you do? That's why I say all four. Am I right, somebody, right? Because I, I know in the West, I know in the Caribbean, they say licks, right? Licks can be anything, all right? But in America, we say whip, and we say beat, right? All, all of it, am I right? Well, listen to what it says. This is a rebellious people. And then the Bible says, what kind of? Isaiah 30, verse 9. This is a rebellious people. The Bible says they are what kind of children? Lying children. I mean, they lie, lie, lie. They lie so much, their nickname is true or false. I'm all right, son. That's how much they lie. The Bible says that children that will not hear the law of the who, somebody? The Lord, which verse 10 says, would say to the seers, now hold on now, what is a seer supposed to do? See what's wrong, am I right? And tell you what they see, am I right? But they say to the seers, don't you look? I'm all right, right? And, prop, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us the right things. What? Don't tell us the truth? Then it says, speak unto us what kind of things? Then it says, prophesy what? Which means, tell us lie. You want to be lied to. What? People would rather support a preacher of a lie to him than one that would tell the truth. Am I right? True. Boy, being a preacher is probably the only profession next to politics where people would rather be lied to than told the truth. Am I right, somebody? Yes. Am I right, somebody? Yes. Man, he's probably, I'm not talking about Canaan now because, you know, this, I'm going to be careful what I'm about to say, okay? In America, no politics is lie. And he told us that if we get that, Jab, right? You would never catch COVID, am I right? But we found out that that was a lie. Am I right, somebody? 
But the Bible said it was going to happen. You wouldn't get it even. Dr. Fauci did his lie himself. He was a liar. You hear me? Dr. Fauci was a liar. With a doctor lying to the whole public. But you wouldn't get it. And most of the people who caught it were those who got the jab. I'm not right, somebody. But I am happy to say to you, now you got the jab, that's between you and God. I understand you do what you got to do is fight. But they were trying to coerce us to get it, am I right? To where you couldn't buy or sell or keep a job without it, am I right? I'm all right. I'm not talking about Cayman. Whatever you get in Cayman, that's, I'm just talking about in America, am I right? But you know what? You think I got that thing? I did not get it. You know why? Because it doesn't work. That's the reason why. And in my research, people have died. People have died because of that. And I was in the store last month. I was buying some food, minding my mind and my business. And this man, white guy, told me, he said, you know what? I'm losing my eyesight. I said, why? Man, it was that back sickness that he told me. <laughs> he said, when I got that back sickness, I was having migraine headaches for three months. And one morning I woke up, I was blind. I said, why? And I mean, I didn't ask him to tell me why. And that was any reason why I should have got it. I don't want to lose my eyesight. Am I right, somebody? Some folk took it, went to bed, and didn't get up. Am I right? You know, let me get off of that because people are going to get mad at me and stuff like that. Man. So, you know what I did in, in America? If I could have did it in Cayman, I would have did it in Cayman. I said, I'm going to open up a business. You know what I did? I was writing exemption letters for anybody that can go to their boss and say, You don't got to take it. And let me tell you, I had. 30 to 40 requests every day for a long time, and I had to keep sending them exemption. People, people still ask me for exemption letters. Writing out forms and saying, because do you know why? Because in the NAD, they said no seven day minutes past supposed to do it. But I did it anyway. Amen. Because you have a right to religious freedom, freedom yes. right? You don't mean to tell people whether do I get the jab that I don't know if it's going to work or I lose my job, right? So I said, look, I'm going to help people. And thank God, many people were helped. Do you understand this right here? If I'd have been a lawyer, I'd have said, let's go to court. But we're going to win. Amen. But anyway, brothers and sisters, let's go back to the text. Because the Bible says, they brought beside the seats. People would rather be lied to. Do you understand this? Look what verse 11 says. You know what verse 11 says? Verse 11 is terrible. It says, get out of the way. Hold on, before we take it out of the way now, in football, I know people talk trash in sports. In football, I would say, get out of my way. In basketball, get out of my way, am I right? I'm sure in soccer, they do something like that, am I right? Others, get out of my direction. You stop me from doing what I need to do, right? But the church says, get you out of the way. It's not like God this. They tell you, God, to get out of their way. Have mercy. I want to go to hell. I don't want to serve you, Lord. I want you to get out of my way. Turn aside out of the path. What? Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. The, church, the condition of the church was so bad. The church was so asleep in sin. They were willing to say, God, I don't want to worship you. I want Satan to be my God. Because there's only two gods. Either it's God or the other. Am I right? So you got people that don't really want to serve God all the way, am I right? They'll never say what they're not, but with their actions, they say, God, get out of the way, have mercy. And you don't want to get to a condition to where you are resisting the authority of God in your life. And that's really the problem with the church. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things that y'all say? See, people love the Savior. They love the Savior, but they hate the Lord, have mercy. They want to say this. They don't want to go to hell, but they don't want to Lord to tell them what they're doing is not right. Do you understand this right here? And let's keep it real. It's very essential for you to go to the doctor at least once a year. Am I right, somebody? To find out if, there's, if you're okay, am I right? But you got some, you got a lot of men like myself until that, until recently, who didn't want to go to the doctor. Right? You know why? Because I don't want that doctor to tell me I got anything wrong with my body. Do you understand this right here? But when I mustered up the courage, I went, I saw what had to be changed, and thank God, I'm doing better now. Do you understand this right here? So what happens is a lot of people don't want to see themselves. I'm all right. They don't want a preacher that's going to tell them the truth, because when you start, that's 
right here. I, I'm going to tell you this right here. In the last 30 years, 35 years in America, we have moved from being word-driven to music-driven. Now, nothing wrong with good music. You need good music. I'm not going music. Y'all were singing some stuff tonight. It was good. You hear me? We need that to set the stage. You understand this? But what's happened is in America, we thought that what we need to do is we need to go to the first, we need to go to our other churches and see what they're doing and then bring that into the Adventist church to bring more, I'm all right, somebody. To where you have two hours of singing and when the preacher get up, he got to be good at 10 minutes. I'm all right, somebody. And if he preach, he better not preach Adventist doctrine. I'm all right. And what has happened? I had a president of an organization in the Adventist Church, I'm going to tell you his name where it was, call me on Saturday morning before 8 o'clock. You know that's important, right? When a president called me before 8 o'clock and literally told me that we have lost the mission, that we have been more music driven. I could just really say he was calling for help and just saying, man, what can we do to bring it back? I'm going to tell you what we got to do. We're going to bring the straight testimony back to the church. You understand this? And teach you what we believe. And it's okay to be peculiar. Am I right, somebody? Yes. But we're living in a day when preachers are trying to teach Christians that it's not okay to be peculiar. You understand this right here? But God has called us to be peculiar because in order, because if you're not peculiar, you're a world. You understand this right here? You should stand out like the sore thumb on your job. Am I right? It doesn't mean be extreme and fanatical, but when people see you dress a certain way, live a certain way, eat a certain way, and you're not working on Saturday, have mercy. If you're not even working on Friday night, have mercy. At the risk, you know that my wife right now is a salesperson in America, and I'm really where she lives at. Everybody in her job works on Saturdays except for her. Everybody. How many? Everybody. And she's been the number one salesperson for about a year or more now. Number one salesperson. Not working on the Sabbath. Do you understand? She'll be here on Thursday. Not working on God's holy day. See, when you stand up for God, God will stand up for you. Yeah. 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 So what you got to do is you got to have some back pulling. Am I right? Yeah. And you got to tell them, no, I do not work. From, I not, no, I will not be working. From Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. And if you don't want to hire me, I'll go find some. And you got to be willing to look at me. I got a friend of mine right now. She's a, 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 a dean at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Some of you heard of Howard University. She was offered a job paying her a lot of money. Now, I know that it, it costs a lot of money to live in Cayman. Am I right, somebody? Yeah. So you got to need a good paying job. Am I right? Wouldn't it be nice for you to have a job paying you $250,000 a year? Oh, yeah, buddy. When, when do I sign up, right? They told me, they said, Dr. Brown, we know you're the seven day events. Mm. We're going to ask you just to come to graduation on Saturday. It's just one, just one. Do you have a problem with that? She said, no, because I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say it after she got the job. She said it before. She said, I don't have a problem because I'm not going. And guess what? They gave her the job anyway. <laughs> See, people have more respect for you standing Yes. yes. So there's going to be some jobs you're going to have to turn down. You understand that? And ladies, I know you're praying for your Boaz to come, but the devil's going to bring a Judas before the Boaz comes. So what I'm talking about. Am I right? Am I right? And you can't be so desperate for love and say, well, I'm just going to just stand up for him until the Boaz comes, right? And then you can't shake the brother off your life. It's the same way with you brothers out here. You understand this right here? You try to pray for your root, but you mess with Delilah. Have mercy. You're going to get to Delilah in a minute. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Let the line of ball because she's going to cut your hair. Let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. So this is serious. Is, is this a serious thing? Yes. People would rather be lied to than told the truth. Am I right? Do you want, do you want somebody to lie to you? No. Uh, do you want somebody to lie to you? No. You say that, but the Bible says that God's people love to be lied to. Have mercy. You don't want to be completely lied to, maybe on a couple of things, right? <laughs> Mayor, one time, there was this guy who was married to my friend. And one day I was in the drugstore buying some stuff. 
And I saw this man walk in the store with his arm around another woman, and it wasn't his cousin either. <laughs> I mean, he was, come here, give me a show. Well, you know, I don't know if you think of nothing, right? Nobody in there, he's all around. I looked. I looked. <laughs> I almost wanted to call him and say, I want to take a picture and say, this is what you're listening to. But I said, maybe, maybe that was his cousin. I said, you know, I, I rationalized it out, right? But you know what? You got some people that are, if I would have showed it, and you would say, yeah, that's my mistress. And I love you too. Well, okay, you know that stuff, right? But look what it says here. And like Ahab, they overlooked the wrong, let's go to the screen, which made it necessary for reproof and rebuke. When, hold on, hold on, When the church departs from who's the matter? When they let the lala cut their hair, watch this right here, they despise the plain testimony. You have And listen to this, a complaint of severity and harshness. It is a sad evidence of the lukewarm state of the church. I remember going to a church one time in America. I was preaching from Revelation 13. And you know that there were Adventists walking out of the church. About half of the church walked out. I was preaching it from the Bible. What we believe. I wasn't harsh. But you know what? We have come to a point now in God's church where people don't want to hear the Adventist message no more in the Adventist church. That's right. I'm all right, somebody. Yes. And we're going to talk about some stuff here this week. Do we need to talk about it? Can we talk about it? Yes. Look at this right here. Just as long as, thank God, just as long as God has a what? He will have those who will cry out and do what somebody? Who will be his instruments to reprove selfishness in what somebody? And who will not shun to declare the whole counsel of God, whether men will hear or forbear? I saw that individuals will rise up against the plain testimonies. Why? It does not suit their natural feelings. They will choose to have smooth things spoken to them. Yes. And they have peace proud of their ears. I view the church in a more dangerous condition than they ever had been. Then we are told experimental religion is known but by how many? Yeah. The wise virgins, those with the oil. Then we're told the shaking must soon take place. To clear the church. Brothers and sisters, there's corruption in the house. And when there's corruption in the house, you gotta clean some things up. Am I right, somebody? Mm -hmm. There may be some people in this room, there's some stuff that you gotta clean out of your life. Or you're gonna be lost. Do you understand this for you? Do you understand what I'm talking about? There may be some things that I need to cleanse out of my life. Even as a preacher, do you understand this? Yes. Oh, I know I ain't going to make it to heaven. Am I right, somebody? So what I'm saying to you, I'm saying to myself as well, too. Am I right? Because I know better than nobody in this room. But what happens is we got to get the strict truth. Do you understand this? We got to do exactly as God tells us to do. Am I right? And not deviate from his plan. Because when we deviate from his plan, guess what happens? Trouble comes to Israel. Now look at this right here. Preachers should have no what somebody scruples to preach the truth as it's found in God's word. She says, let the truth what somebody? What? I have been shown why ministers have not more success. Hold on now. I want to know why. I'm a minister. Because they are afraid of hurting what somebody. You got some spineless coward pastors in the church. They see stuff going on and they don't want to address it. Am I right? True. And when somebody else comes in and do it, they don't want to, they want to ostracize them. Am I right? Yes. Don't bring Dr. O to your church. Don't watch State Line 7. Am I right, somebody? Don't bring Pastor Thompson to that church, church, because he's going to tell the truth, right? right. right. They're fearful not being courteous, and they lower the standard of what, somebody? True. True. People now are getting baptized and stuff on that they shouldn't be getting baptized and stuff on. Am I right, somebody? Yes. What you baptizing people into? You're not telling them that no before you get baptized. You're going to let you know what the Bible says. Am I right? We don't need that no more. Am I right? You know why we don't believe that no more. Look what it says. Quote, and conceal, if possible, the peculiarity of our faith. I saw that God could not make such men, what somebody, successful. The truth must be made pointed. 
and the necessity of a decision to be made. And as false preachers are crying peace and are preaching smooth things, the servants of God must cry loud and do what somebody? Yeah. And, and leave the results with who somebody? God. God. Do you understand this? Yes. This is serious. Remember this book? Remember, remember this book? Yes. Remember that book called Creeping What Somebody? Yes. Written by somebody called who? We need to put this in every church member's hand in the Cayman Islands. Everybody needs to read it. Wednesday night, AY, whatever, we need to start reading this stuff because guess what? We have departed from the blueprint. But it's not creeping no more. It's leaping compromise. Now, I'm not right, somebody. I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book called Leaping Compromise. We'll give y'all a copy of my writing. Amen. Because it's getting bad, y'all, in the Adventist church. Leaping compromise. Brothers and sisters, we are told that this is So, what does the Bible say? Let's go back to the screen. The Bible says, let's go back to the screen. The Bible says, remove not the ancient what somebody, which thy fathers have what somebody. Don't remove what Elder Gilbert McLaughlin brought to this island in 1895, 94. Am I right, somebody? Am I right? Yes. Now, I'm really, he's my brother too, too. But that won't mean anything. If I'm not saved, you understand this right here, right? Remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have what? He was riding on his boat one day and got to Honduras and heard the truth and came to back to Cayman. And where would Elder McLaughlin live at? Where? He said, the only evidence on my, even his wife was in the seven day of this. Am I right? But he kept on preaching. Am I right? And what's the first STA church here in Cayman? East End. Amen. And praise God for it. Out of East End, all these churches got started. But it had to take a vision, am I right? And I'm sure that Elder McLaughlin wasn't watering anything down. You understand this right here? He was preaching the what? Straight testimony. Am I right, somebody? Yes. And the church has grown to what it is. We thank God for his contribution. So what happens is, remove not the ancient landmarks. So therefore, Get into my story. Get into my sermon. Once upon a time. Have you heard that before? Once upon a time? Once upon a time, there was a man named Samson. And guess what? He had a calling by God. And God said, I want you to do two things. I don't want you to eat any unclean thing. Am I right, somebody? But, hold on now. God said, what I want you to also do is, he was not to do what? Cut his he was not to do what, somebody? Cut his hair. Oh. Hold on, hold on. I don't want a razor coming to your head for no reason. I'm all right. I don't want you doing no trimmings. I'm all right, somebody. I want you to let that hair out. I want you to have dreadlocks. That's what he wanted to have. You understand this? Because he had locks. I'm all right. Were they dreads? I don't know. But let me tell you this from here. Before we get to this, I'm going to kind of show you something. Can I show you something? People are supposed to deliver the Jews out of the bondage of the Philistines. Am I right, Sam? And what is our job here in Canaan? We're supposed to preach the gospel of Jesus to deliver people out of spiritual bondage. Am I right, Sam? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And to help some of these church members that are in bondage as well, too, because trust me, you've got people in the church. They may be physically in the church, but they're in the world. Am I right, Sam? Am I right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let's look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Are you enjoying this, brothers and sisters? Yes. Oh, wait till tomorrow night. This thing is so good, I'm probably going to have to do part two. And wait till we get to part two. You really, you really want to hear this straight testimony? Yes. Wait till part two tomorrow night. Because my time is running out. Tonight. But I'll be done shortly. But watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 7. We will look at verses 1 through 4. Now notice what the Bible says. Now God gave some specific direction to his church. And Samson was supposed to follow this too. But Samson was violating all these principles. He was playing out of bounds. That verse. And guess what? He lost the day. Verse 1 says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, what if thou goest to do what somebody? To possess it, and have cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Gergeshites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and there's a lot of people, right? Parasites, and there's a lot of heathen, am I right? 
and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. Verse 2. The Bible says in verse 2, look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, God says, I want you to do some things. Number one, I want you to do what? I want you to smite. I want you to kill them all. Every single last one. Number two, and you shall utterly, and then he said, I'm not to smite. I want you to utterly destroy them. They stand the You got to cut their heads off, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't destroy them. But notice what the Bible says. If you do the first two things, then you're not going to make no covenant with them. Am I right, somebody? I don't want no Adventists. We're going we're gonna to join Cambridge Academy with some worldly school. Am I right, somebody? We're going to come together with one. Don't do that. You can say this right We're going to join Savannah Seventh Adventist Church with some other church. Am I right, somebody? We can't do that. You can stand this right here. No. And do you know in America we had an Adventist hospital joined the Catholic hospital? Yes. You don't look it up on the internet. You don't do stuff like that. Am I right, somebody? I'm all right. Let's go back to the scripture. Let's go back to the screen. And when the Lord, thought, okay, it says, nor God says, don't even show mercy. You know why? Because, look at verse 3. Don't show mercy unto me. That sounds cruel, doesn't it? It sounds cruel, doesn't it? But it came from a God who knows human nature. All right, so it came from a God who knows what's best. And see, that's the problem. When God tells us to do something, we don't want to do it because to us, it don't make no sense. I'm all right, somebody. True. But whatever God says always makes sense. Am I right? Amen. And he don't got to give you no explanation why. Look at verse 3. Neither shalt thou make marriages. Uh oh Hold on. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Now, if you have married one of them, then you got to make it work. You understand this way. But if you're single, don't you be marrying somebody who's not of the same faith as you are. You understand this right here? Don't do it. And if they are a seven-day Adventist, make sure they have converted seven-day Adventists. Am I right? Bible-believing, spirit of prophecy-believing Adventists. Am I right, somebody? Going to church on the Sabbath time plan. Righteousness by faith believing. Victory over sin believing STA. Am I right? They got to come completely clean. Am I right? Am I right? And even if they do meet the test, Lord, are you sure? Am I right? Because sometimes you got to find out. Am I right? Because the person you marry may not be the same person a year from now. I'm mercy. Am I right? Got a friend of mine right now. Got married to this guy, but to the wedding. And then after the wedding, she told me, she told me years later, she said, the Lord spoke to me an hour before the wedding. They said, don't marry me. Hold on now. Everything's paid for. The bridegroom were there. The bridesmaids were there. Everything was set. And you mean not to marry me? But if God says don't do it, even if it's five minutes before you walk out there, you better, don't lie, say, well, I got a cold. I can't make it out there. But I said, no, the Lord told me don't do this. And had she had done it, she went through something that I don't even want to talk about. Well, can I tell you what it was? Can I tell you what it was? Yes. You're not going to tell nobody? Yes. You know what you want to say, right? Her husband. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But it was something close to that. He didn't want to love to his wife. He didn't want to be intimate with him. You done married, you done waited. Some of us have been out in the world and stuff, fornicate, and then you get married and the person says, I don't want to do it. Oh, you feel like you ripped off, am I right? Am I right? Oh, no. How can I know this marriage, right? And she stayed in it. You understand this? Hopefully he changed. Because had he talked to me, I would be like, brother, you better find a way out. You're going to get that. I would really just put it on. But look at this. Neither shalt thou make marriages with him. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto this what? So in other words, have you heard the term, who gives this man up? No, you don't. No, I'm not. I'm not no, I'm not. No, no. I'm all right. Nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy what? I don't care how beautiful she is. Let me say this to you. I don't care if she's beautiful. Let me tell you something beautiful. He's a woman out there. I'm all right. I'm all right. Let's go. Let's go. Look at verse 4. Verse 4. The Bible says in verse 4, for they will turn away your son from yeah. going what? Following me. Oh, they, they said it, right? Yes. That they may serve other That's why you don't get caught up with someone who's not of your religion because you don't want to 
are serving a God, they serve even if it's no God. Have mercy. If they are atheists, you are not believing in God no more. Have mercy. And it says, so will the anger of the Lord be killed against you. And God said, I'm going to send you to hell. Right? Yes. Am I right, somebody? Yes. Don't let the Lord cut who? Cut what? Your hair, Your hair right? Mm. And Samson, he didn't marry him, but he was dating him. Am I right, somebody? And it caused him to get his hair cut off. Am I right, somebody? Yes. Uh-oh. Let's go back to let's go back to the PowerPoint. Let's go back. Are you enjoying this? If there's anybody, you, you in some kind of relationship with the heathen, we're going to pray tonight to break that thing off. Amen? Amen. And we can do a secret. We're not going to find nobody. Am I right? You can even call my phone number. Just call past the cable or go to my website, Project Atlanta right now. You go to my Facebook. It's just, I didn't talk to you properly. You didn't stand this right here. Because brothers and sisters, there are some yokes that need to be broken. But let me tell you how powerful Samson was. This, um, let me tell you how powerful he was. All right, let me tell you how powerful he was. Now, he was so powerful. This is my, this is really, I really love Samson because he was strong. Am I right, somebody? He was endowed with supernatural strength. The Bible says a, a young lion roared against him. Now, when it's a young lion, that means that lion is very strong. Am I right? Had an old lion, he could slap him in the face. Am I right, somebody? All right? Am I right? Yes. I mean, if I could touch a lion, I would do it. I, if I could. Even when I went to South Africa, I was touching a baby cub lion, and I was still scared. You understand? Because we know when they grow up and stuff like that. We could be having lions as pets and stuff like that. Oh, he ain't going to hurt you. I don't believe it. One man had a lion as a pet for 30 years, and then turned on and killed him. I'm all right. Yes. You think the devil, you think you can keep playing with the devil for 30 or 40 years, am I right? The devil going to turn on you one day. You understand this? Yes. And he's going to kill you. Because the Bible says the devil walks about as a roaring what, somebody? A lion, right? Look at this right here. And look at verse 6. It says, if the spirit of the Lord can what, somebody? We need the spirit, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rented him. You know what a kid is? A goat. And what is one of the favorite Jamaican dishes? Curry goat. I'm all right, somebody. <laughs> Got the little goats and stuff like that. You can kill a goat with your bare hands, am I right? It wouldn't take much to kill a goat. But you couldn't kill a lion like that, could you? No. You couldn't. You could. <laughs> And he had nothing in his hand. Look at this right here. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, look at this. Let's go to the screen. The source of Samson's strength was. But the symbol of his strength was his what? Yeah. So the hair was not his strength, it was a symbol. Am I right? Uh -huh. But the source is the Holy Ghost. Am I right? Amen. Look at this. The source, let's go to the screen now. The source of our strength is the what, somebody? The Holy Ghost in the early and latter rain. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, without me, you can do nothing. Am I right? Yes. Not by might, nor by power, but by my what? Spirit. Look at this. The Bible says, ask you the Lord for what? In the time of the what? And you know what? I, I'm glad I read this. So we got to pray for the latter rain tonight. Do you understand this? We need the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen? Amen. And we're going to have an appeal tonight. All those that want to receive the latter rain, we're going to pray this prayer. Amen? Amen? Look at this right here. Actually, the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. Ellen White says, I saw that none can share the refreshing unless they obtain the victory over every one somebody. Over pride, selfishness, love of the world, and over every wrong of every one somebody. Actually, therefore, we should there, therefore be drawing nearer and nearer to the Lord and be earnestly seeking that preparation necessary to enable us to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Didn't the Bible say, stand, put on the whole armor of God? Did the Bible tell us that? Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his word. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Is that what the Bible said? Yeah. 
Yes. You're not wrestling against politicians. You're not even wrestling against people. You're wrestling against demonic forces that are using people to bring you down. Am I right, somebody? That's why you got to be careful of who you marry, who you associate with, because those principalities will work through people to bring you down. Do you understand this right here? You've got to stand. The Bible is stand, therefore, having your loins girt about the truth. Am I right? Yeah. Putting on the breastplate of what, somebody? You know what the whole armor is. Look at this right here. So, therefore, notice this. But the symbol, somebody say symbol. The symbol of our strength is the three angels' messages. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me say it one more time. The symbol of our strength is the three angels' messages. Fear God and get what? Lord. Babylon is what? Lord. Don't receive the mark of the beast. Here is the patience of the what? Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for more? Can I give you more? But you know it's important to them. And I heard that after nine folks is going to stop clocking out. That means I got to do part two, right? But watch this right here. But! There was a woman. There was a woman that he got the fire with. And her name? Oh. Even yeah, she's pretty. Man. That's a cartoon picture. She too would be on my right. Not better than my wife. Amen. But her name was what, somebody? Look at her. Her name was what? Remember what Revelation says. The wise virgins are they which were not defiled with women. Am I right? Mm -hmm. He got into the wrong relationship. And let's go to this right here. The Aramaic root word for the word Delilah is what's the name? Seductive. And when she seductive, she had to be for her for him. Because after what he did, and what she tried to do three times, we're going to talk about that tomorrow night. After what she did three times, you know what happened those three times. You, you, you can read Judges 16 for your homework tonight, baby. You should have known something's up here. But he was so blinded by love. Am I right? Yes. That man be cheating on you and stuff like that? I talked to a friend of mine tonight. Husband separated from her. She told me he lived with two women. I said, what? And he said he'd never done nothing with nobody? Oh, no, he lying. He lying. You know he's lying, right? Unless those are his sisters and his cousins, he's lying. All right. You see him holding hands. You see him down in Georgetown holding hands. Your friend be like, girl. They screenshot and send it to you. He's holding hands with another woman. Blinded by love. You sent him a text and said, Who in the world is this? Oh, that's a Canadian person. You know you got both for that, right? Way back, so they did back in slaves were here in Georgetown, right? They used to just hold hands as a sign of unity. We shall overcome one day, right? <laughs> Oh, okay, as long as you don't do nothing, right? He lied to you, am I right, somebody? You catch the woman in the act. In that, you come home early, oh, I'm surprised my wife. And you come home and you see a surprise. And you know what she'll say? You wasn't supposed to see that. Oh, nothing happened. A oh, man ain't gonna believe it. He don't give up what he see. Am I right, somebody? And when you're blinded by love, you will become blind to the truth. Am I right, somebody? When you're blinded by love to the things of this world, brothers and sisters, when you see that this relationship is gonna cause you to lose everything, many people are willing, watch this right here, to be in the bed with the lot of happiness. Rather than he was supposed to kill you, he was supposed to cut her off. Am I right tonight? But he didn't, am I right? What he does, he was defiling himself with the life. And tomorrow night, we're going to talk about We're going to talk about it tomorrow. Are you ready for tomorrow night? 
I need you to invite at least how many people? Five, Five people. Tomorrow night, we're going to talk about the seven locks that are not to be cut off of God's people. Am I right? And we're going to talk about this, and we're going to get into some deep stuff. Hey, and I was kind of surprised that I got up so early and stuff. So I hope I can get up by 7.30 tomorrow night. Because we're going to talk about some stuff that needs to change in Cayman Islands country. See, understand this right here. It needs to change in the lives of God's people. Do you understand this right here? Because Pastor Thompson, the president, the conference can only do so much. Do you understand this right here? But we're the one. You're the ones that's going to carry this message. Am I right, somebody? And one of the best ways to carry it is to live it. Am I right? Yeah. And brothers and sisters, we don't talk about it. Because what happened was, my brother should have been on his job. Am I right? But the problem is, he wasn't. And what does the Bible say? While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and what? He was asleep literally, but he definitely was sleeping spiritually. Am I right? And when she put him to sleep, have mercy, it led to his downfall. Can we do part two tomorrow night? Then we may have to do part three on, watch this right here, Wednesday night. Have mercy, we ain't done. But my question is, is there anybody in the house that wants to say, Pastor, I need you, Lord? To pray for me. I need you, Pastor, to pray for me that God will give you strength. If that's your desire, come down to the front right here. You need some strength. Because I need some strength. I don't need the lot of cut in my hair. Amen. I don't need being made with the lot. Need to stand this thing. And if there's anybody here that needs healing from any disease, after we close tonight, I want you to meet me right here in this corner right here. We're going to pray for the sick. If there's anybody that's demon possessed, we're going to pray that God will cast these demons out. If you've got a demon possessed person in your home, we'll, we'll pray with you for, with you for them after, after this is over. Back in the day, they used to lay hands on people. And people were filled with the Holy Ghost. If we were as diligent in receiving power, in our spiritual lives, as we are faithful in putting power in our cell phones. Or oh, we make sure we don't leave our house without charging them. Am I right? Somebody yes. our cell phone. Because that cell phone is your lifeline. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Even if you have one bar left, you're going to try to me find me a charging station. Am I right? Let me buy me, let me buy me a charger. Am I right? Somebody, you, 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 you're going to make sure that you don't run out of power. Am I right? But many people right now are running out of the power of the oil of the Holy Spirit. Thinking they're gonna make it, am I right? So guess what? It's time for us to receive power, brothers and sisters. And tomorrow night, I want all of you to be back here tomorrow night. As we deal with don't let the lava cut your hair. Part two. Shall we pray, Father in heaven? We come before you in prayer. Because some of us, we've been in bed with the lot for a little while. We have defiled ourselves. We are blinded by the love and the things of this world, Lord. And I want to ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our apostasies. Forgive us for what we deviated, Lord God. But, Father in heaven, the devil is walking about as a roaring lion in the kingdom, seeking who he may devour. And, Father in heaven, we need strength, Lord God, tonight. Not tomorrow, we need strength tonight. So, Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you will empty us of your, ourselves, Lord God. If there's anybody here who's demonically possessed, Lord God, demonically controlled, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command that those demons be cast out right now in the name of Jesus. We ask that you'll lift that monkey off their back, Lord God. We want to pray that you would empty yourself and fill us with yourself with the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. You said in Ephesians that we are to be filled with all the fullness of God. So, Father, fill us with your complete fullness, Lord. That when we may not, Lord God, walk in sin, Lord God. And I want to pray it as we come to the front. We want to pray that you give us Pentecostal power. From the young person to the oldest person in this room. Send now the power of the Holy Spirit. Even those who are watching, we'll be able to condemn sin in our flesh, Lord God. Like Jesus did. We want to pray a blessing over this church, over this pastor, over this wonderful conference, Lord God. As they seek to hold up the standards of truth. We pray for our leaders in um, the administration of this country, Lord, that they won't give in to the things of this world, Lord. 
Maybe lift up a standard against LGBT marriage, Lord God. Maybe lift up a standard against crime and abuse, Lord God. We want to pray that you'll make the seven day of church and the Cayman Islands the head and not the tail, Lord God. May we be the pace setters, Lord God, to where politicians will come to Pastor Harry and Pastor Thompson and say, before we pass this law, what do you think? Are we going the right way, Lord God? May, we, may this conference be the head, Lord, to where everybody will come. Bless us until we come back tomorrow night to hear more of the straight testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen.